I only have one message to give you. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care what you call me. I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, folks, <laughs> the uh, reservations for the conference are now rolling in. So if you plan on attending, you had better get in gear. And I'm going to go over all of the particulars uh, once again during this hour so that you'll know. And we're going to be sending out a mailing to all of the Veritas subscribers and uh, Kaji IS members here within the next couple of days. Now, we're only going to take 100 people for this, folks. So you, you have to remember that the space is limited. This is also going to be the very best conference that we have ever had. It's not going to be anything like the last conferences. Uh, nothing is going to be repeated um, that has uh, been done in the last conferences. Um, the last three, I should say. This is our fourth annual conference. Uh, all of our conferences are usually well attended, and uh, everybody who has ever attended has just enjoyed themselves immensely. Uh, the last one was the most successful of the last three. Uh, actually, that's not really not true. I think the first conference we ever had was the best one. Uh, it was my favorite, and I think it was my favorite because it was the first. If, uh, if, you're, if you're counting facilities and uh, and attendance and, uh, and all of the niceties, then the last conference would have been the best. This conference is going to so far exceed <laughs> the last one uh, that, that it is just uh, amazing. One of the things that I forgot to tell you is that the ranch we're staying at, ladies and gentlemen, is a five-star camp. Um, it's rated as a five-star camp. You don't get five stars very easy. That's the top of the line. And it's not just a camp, it's a working horse ranch. And there are all kinds of extracurricular activities. Uh, there's the baseball diamond where we can play some softball. Uh, it's just amazing. And I'm going to be cluing you in to some of the things that go on at the ranch uh, that we can take advantage of while we're there. Some of them will be extra if you want to participate. Uh, most of it is included uh, in the price. There are only 40 beds available, so the first 40 people who send in their money for the beds get those beds. Everybody else will either have to bring camping gear or an RV, and uh, you can camp right at the ranch, or you can uh, stay in your RV right at the ranch, although um, uh, it's not a hookup place. You'll have to be self-contained if you do that. Uh, or you can elect to stay at one of the many motels uh, nearby, in, uh, in the, the town near where the ranch is located. Now, the ranch is not in my hometown, ladies and gentlemen. It is not where I live, but it is in the state of Arizona. And we're not going to give out the location except to those people who have paid for their reservation for their seat. Now, remember, once you've sent your money in, folks, the, the money is non-refundable, no matter the situation or the circumstance. It doesn't make any difference. So understand this, when you plan to come, make your plans solid, because once you've paid, your payment is non-refundable. That seed is there for you, whether you attend or not, that's your business, but the seat will be there for you. If some emergency comes up and you are absolutely unable to attend, we can help you find somebody else who will then pay you for your seat. Okay, that's as far as we can go. But if we can't find somebody and it's full up or, or whatever happens, then just remember uh, that we've given you forewarning so that there's no hard feelings and no, no, uh, no problems there. You see, we have, to, we have to foot the bill whether you show or not. And once, uh, once your reservation is paid, it's paid, my friend. But believe me, you're going to want to come and uh, you're going to enjoy every single second uh, that you attend this year's conference. Let me just give you a little bit of, of uh, some of the things that go on here. Uh, but, uh, let me see if I can find it. Again, it's a five-star camp. And uh, this ranch was actually designed to provide an educational and uh, 
of course, fun-filled environment for everybody of all ages. And it has activities for children, for young people, for uh, uh, young adults, and uh, for everybody of every age group that you can uh, think of. And it is absolutely beautiful. They have uh, children's camps there several times a year for um, uh, handicapped and uh, less fortunate um, children and, uh, of course, young people and adults. And uh, as I said, it's a working horse ranch. And I got to tell you, that uh, in a world driven by television, fax machines, computers, and uh, cellular phones, this is uh, this is a much simpler path. It's a place where you can really relax. You're not going to be watching any television here. I can assure you of that. If you're hooked on television, uh, you don't want to come. You don't want to be a part of this because you're not going to you're not going to have it. It's not going to happen. And uh, this, uh, you're, you're going to be surrounded by nature. All of the things that I've talked about um, being peculiar to the wilds of Arizona, you're going to find on this ranch. Now, it's uh, it's in the state of Arizona. That's the only location that I can give you. It's just a few miles outside of a resort town. Uh, it is surrounded by tall ponderosa pines. There are herds of grazing elk, antelope, and deer. Uh, it's just absolutely beautiful. The uh, surrounding forest. And it's a huge forest. Uh, and vast trail systems provide you with a, a tremendous platform of wildlife observation. You'll have a window into the world of birds of prey and migratory fowl, from elk and antelope to streams, lakes, and wildflowers. You may even uh, wander upon a curious bear or the large tracks of a mountain lion might catch your attention. And I'm not exaggerating at all. Now, I told you this is a working horse ranch, and horses prevail, um, as will you, um, when you enjoy the petting zoo of farm animals or relax at uh, any one of the many uh, occupations that are there to keep you busy. But, uh, you know, it's going to be kind of hard to take care of some of that because the conference is going to keep you busy, I can assure you of that. Um, you're even welcome to lend a hand if you want to, folks. Uh, whether it be harnessing a team of uh, draft horses for an evening hayride and the cookout on the last night, or, or if you want to help round up horses from pasture, there's always work to be done in the saddle on a working ranch. And uh, you can take part in that if you want to. You might want to get involved in uh, one or several of the many crafts that are available for you to take advantage of. And uh, if you have a guitar, bring it along, because there's nothing better than somebody who can pick a good guitar around a campfire on a beautiful Arizona starlit night. And uh, so, if you've got one, bring it. Now, folks, if you're going to take advantage of the camping facilities, in other words, if you're not going to get a um, bed in the bunkhouse, there's actually four bunkhouses. Each bunkhouse has 10 beds, so it's not a big, huge bunkhouse with 40 people in it. It's four bunkhouses. Each bunkhouse has 10 bunk beds, and they're comfortable, they're nice, they're very uh, uh, warm and beautiful, and uh, you'll, really, you'll really like it. When you get here, we'll take a vote on whether you want to go ahead and have co-ed bunkhouses or whether you want to separate them into male and female, and that's strictly up to you, whatever the majority vote is. That's the way we'll do it. And uh, the rest of you, as I said, can either uh, take advantage of the local motels in town or you can bring your camping gear and without spending any other money, you can camp right there at the ranch at no extra charge whatsoever. And uh, that's really a pretty good deal, if you ask me. Of course, you didn't, but uh, I'm going to give you my opinion anyway because <clears throat> I know about these things. Now, here are the prices for members. If you And remember, all meals are provided no matter what, whether you get the bunkhouse or whether you stay in town in a motel or whether you elect to camp out on site, all meals are provided. 
Now, don't call and ask if you can just pay for the conference and skip the meals. No, you can't. Because uh, basically what we told them is we're going to pay them for 100 people uh, at that conference eating three meals a day uh, plus 40 beds in the bunkhouse. And we're going to pay that whether we fill it or not, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, so basically what we're paying for are the meals. And uh, this is, these are world-class meals. I mean, this is top-of-the-line stuff. This isn't, uh, this isn't pork and beans and, uh, and coleslaw stuff. This is really top-notch, super-duper, five-star stuff. And uh, you're going you're gonna to absolutely love it. I don't know how to describe it to you to do it justice. If you want all meals and you want a bed in the bunkhouse plus the conference, Meals and conference come no matter what you do, okay? So if you want the bed, for a single person, it's $400. For a couple, it's $740. Remember, single person, $400, couple, $740. These are for members, members only, either CAGI or Intelligence Service. If you uh, want to come and just have the meals and conference, no bed. You provide your own camping gear. You can bring a tent, a sleeping bag, or however you want to do it. Or you can stay in town in one of the fine motels that are in the area. And there's lots of them, and they're very good. If you want to do that, that's fine. But for meals and conference, four members, single person, $340. $340. So you can see, folks, the people who are getting the bed, just, you're just paying 60 bucks for that bed for the whole week. Can't feed it. I mean, this is really... Uh, fantastic. Wait till you see the meeting facilities. You're just absolutely not going to believe it. You're going to be floored. Everybody is going to sit at a spacious table, very comfortable, are going to have plenty of room, you're going to have three meals a day, and uh, you're just going to absolutely be bowled over by the whole experience. The uh, meals and the conference, single person, $340, couple, $680. Okay? Now, for children, you have to add... So, if you, if you have children you want to bring them, call Connie at 520-333-4578 and get the prices uh, for the children. But basically, if you've got meals, bed, and conference for you and your children, for uh, each child under 12, add $220. Each child over 12, add $270. For just meals and the conference, uh, children under 5 are free. Remember, these are member prices. Children under 5 are free. Uh, children under 12, but over 5, add $120 per child. Children over 12, add $240 per child. There's a cabin available with a kitchen. And remember, you have to pay for meals anyway. <laughs> so, so uh, well, that's not really true with the cabin. You really don't have to. Call if you want the cabin. Whoever sends the money for the cabin first gets it. There's only one. Um... Non-members, meals, bed, and conference. This is non-members. If you are not a member, meals, bed, and conference, single person, $500, couple, $840. That's for the whole week. All meals, conference, and your bed. For a child over 12, add $260 per child. Um, excuse me, that's a child under 12. For, one ch for any child under 12, add $260 per child. Children over 12 at $310 per child. If you're going to come just and have the meals and conference, you want to camp out or stay in one of the motels in the area, single person is $440. Remember, this is non-members. And a couple is $780. Children under 5 are still free. Child under 12 but over 5 at $160 per child. Children over 12 at $280 per child. So there you have it, all the prices and the stuff for the, for the upcoming conference. It's going to be the best there ever was. We're going to have some uh, speakers, and uh, the agenda is going to be uh, just absolutely out of this world. You don't want to miss it. Ah, you're listening once again to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. And boy, i got to tell you, it's, uh, it's really nice not having to worry about doing a commercial. It really is. It's also nice not having to do two hours anymore, which, uh, folks, really uh, is too long. i got to tell you that. I'm really glad we're back on a one-hour schedule. It is much better for me 
I think it will be much better for the broadcast uh, once we all get used to getting back in the swing of one hour. Uh, the program uh, Monday and yesterday um, went fast. <laughs> Just whew, gone. Incredible. Uh, yesterday was my birthday, and so you heard a rerun. Got a new watch from uh, Annie and uh, Sue and Allison. Bought me a new saw. And I really love that song. I want to thank all of you who sent birthday cards, both for the broadcast and for my birthday. Uh, they were all appreciated and uh, are uh, all over the place around the house. Or at least they were yesterday. I don't know what uh, Annie's done with them this morning. But anyway, um, the uh, birthday for the broadcast and my birthday in the last couple of days were just both a lot of fun. I'm going to take calls today because we haven't done it in a long time. The number is 520-333-4578. And we'll be happy to talk about anything that you want to talk about. Uh, it's been a while since we've done this. And uh, again, this is a speaker phone hooked up here. So I don't uh, really know if I've got it hooked up like I had it before. I hope I do. And if I do, then it will work fine. If I don't, then uh, you'll you know you'll have to adjust your voice accordingly, and I'll give you some uh, clues and hints as to how that's going. Again, the number is five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. We'll be taking calls for the rest of this hour. For those of you who uh, may be interested, Waco: The Rules of Engagement is uh, going to be playing today and tomorrow still at the Dolby Theater in Austin, Texas. That number is 512-505-0105. And uh, let me see here. It's going to it's going to be showing at 2.30 in the afternoon and 8 p.m. I think tomorrow is the last day through Thursday, May 8th. Friday, May 2nd through Thursday, May 8th. The Atlanta Film Festival, AMC Phipps 14. It will be showing Sunday, June 1st, and uh, that's at 3500 Peachtree Road, Atlanta, Georgia. Also, the Sebastopol Cinemas. No, that's already over. I'm sorry. That happened while I was in, uh, in uh, California. The Coolidge Corner Theater, 290 Harvard, Brookline, Massachusetts. Um, that number is 617 it will be showing there from Friday, June 27th, 1997, uh, and it should run for at least a week. It's also going to be showing Friday, June 6th, 1997, and Sunday, June 8th, 1997, at the Human Rights Watch Film Festival, and I have no idea where that's at. I don't know if we have problems with this phone or not, folks, because, uh, oh, here we go. Let's check this out. Uh, good afternoon. You're on the air. Hello? Hey, Bill? Yes. Hello, Bob. Hey, uh, I wanted to ask you, I was really considering uh, heading on down there from New York okay, here about two years ago, and I wanted to know what would be the uh, the earliest I could uh, come to the ranch or uh, because it takes me about four days to get down there. Monday morning. Monday morning is the earliest you can arrive at the ranch. Okay, that's what I wanted to find out. So, yeah. therefore, I have to consider finding other facilities Saturday and Sunday. You can either arrange to arrive there sometime Monday morning, um, or you can uh, arrange to come in uh, Sunday and uh, uh, you know get a motel in the in the nearby town, or whatever you want to do. Um, but the, I'll, let me I'll call the ranch and ask if people who are going to camp out can come on Sunday and camp out there uh, over Sunday night. Although there won't be any meals on Sunday. Uh huh. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great time. Well, this is going to be an even greater time. Yeah, greater time. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, I look forward to uh, meeting you again and uh, enjoying the camaraderie with the uh, people that I uh, met uh, during the time I was there. And I know you're going to uh, have a better and greater conference than you ever had before. That's true, and I think there's also going to be. Uh, 
uh, a state of new people will be at this, along with uh, some of the regulars who have attended every single conference that we've had. That's so, great. I got one other question. Uh, would, would you try to break it up a little bit uh, so we can, you know, uh, coordinate it so we can uh, have our lunches and, and uh, breakfasts and everything else? Oh, of course. You didn't think I was not going to let you have breakfast, lunch, and supper, did you? No. <laughs> Well, it won't be that way uh, this time. Uh, this time we're going to have to break because the meals are provided and it's part of the conference. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we will we will be doing that. Okay, that's good then. Also, in and past... Happy birthday yesterday. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you too. Uh, and in the past, when we, when we did that, when we didn't break for uh, meals, it was because the, the conference attendees didn't want to. We... We were engaged in uh, in something that was so interesting that they didn't want to break, and that's you know that's the way our conferences go. The number is five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. We haven't taken calls for some time, so we're going to do that uh, this hour and uh, let everybody get a word in sideways if uh, if they want to. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Hi, this is Jackie from Benner, Ohio. Hi, Jackie. How are you? I would also like a happy birthday. I know yesterday was it, but like today. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I talked to you a couple months ago about. I remember you. A JFK book uh, report. Yes. My political science. I got a D on it. You got a D on it. Yeah, and the best part is he wanted a copy of the Sabrina film. Uh huh. Why did he, Why did he give you a D? Because he didn't think my um facts are real and stuff. He didn't believe what I put down and stuff. And he put little question marks on it, and he just didn't even... Huh. Well, you know what? You should challenge that. You should write a letter to the school principal and say that uh, your teacher gave you a D based upon his personal beliefs rather than the paper that you wrote. And you should demand a little justice. Okay. Because that's not fair. I know. Right? <laughs> that's not fair at all. Uh, and that's what these Marxist, socialist... Uh, uh, people who are destroying the minds of our children, uh, this is, that's one of the ways that they do it. They make it unrewarding for you to examine anything other than what they want you to believe. Yeah. You're a very intelligent young lady, so uh, don't let them do that to you. Yeah, that's what I told them. I told them I was right. I mean, I gave, I gave him a number, an author, uh -huh. to talk to you when he didn't take, he didn't want to. Yeah, well, like I said, write a letter to your school principal and, and uh, demand some justice. You know, he should have graded you on your paper, not on his personal beliefs. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for calling. Okay. 520-333-4578 is the number. For those of you who might be Michael Cottingham Quest for Health fans, uh, and you missed it last week, it's because we had trouble with the satellite, as you probably already know. And uh, you probably missed it Monday night this week because we had trouble with our Comrex here uh, uplinking it on the, uh, on the satellite through the Worldwide Freedom Radio Network. Uh, we did uh, two episodes of uh, Quest for Health last night. We'll do two more tonight. And uh, the ones tonight at Michael's request will be reruns. And then beginning next week, we should have a whole new spate of uh, Quest for Health episodes uh, to run for you beginning Monday. 520-333-4578 is the number. If you'd like to call and uh, get something off your chest or uh, talk about whatever subject uh, that you wish. The scheduling for the Worldwide Freedom Radio Network programming is uh, Monday through Friday, 6 until 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, the hour of the time. Here's Shirley William Cooper. Monday and Tuesday nights, uh, 9 until 10 p.m., Quest for Health with Michael Cottingham. Remember, all times are Eastern Daylight. Thursday night, 9 to 11 p.m., Home Satellite Radio Show with Dan Morgan. Uh, Fridays, uh, Friday Night Live with Gary Bourgeois, 9 to 11 p.m. And uh, Saturday, uh, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. is American Expose with Chris Gurdon. Um, let me see here. For those of you thinking of getting into low-power broadcasting, we have experimented 
And we've experimented with other people who have experimented. And uh, we're down to just about the perfect combination of equipment. So you might want to write this down, just in case you're one of those people who are interested in setting up your own broadcasting affiliate station for the Worldwide Freedom Radio Network. Um, there's only one transmitter that I can truly recommend that is just fantastic and has not let anybody down at all. And you can either buy it fully uh, wired and tested, or you can buy it in kit form and put it together yourself. And that's the and I have nothing to do with Ramsey Electronics, folks. I don't get a nickel from them, period. All I'm interested in is helping you set up your your low power FM broadcast station if you want to do that. And uh, the one we recommend is the Super Pro FM stereo radio station from Ramsey Electronics. It's a complete all-in-one stereo radio station. Everything is included. The filters are in there. You're not going to get any harmonics on some other frequency. It's as solid as a rock. Uh, it's, uh, it's just a great transmitter. So I want to let you know we're not recommending the FM10 or the FM25 anymore. In fact, we never recommended the FM10 to begin with. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Uh, good afternoon, Bill. This is Jim Prescott. Hi, Jim. How are you? Oh, fine. Uh, there's a question I'd like to ask. Maybe you've got some answers. Sure, uh, go ahead. Doesn't mean I'll have any answers, but go ahead. Well, remember this uh, jet that uh, disappeared? Is it day 10? Yeah. Supposedly, uh, I, it kind of got killed in the news with this Texas thing. No, they found it. I know that they say they found it. Uh, oh. Is there anything else that you know about? Did they go in and... Uh, at this site and uh, go through it and get the bombs and stuff? Is it, is it, was it really there or what? As far as I know, they found the aircraft and um, they found the uh, life... in those Colorado Rockies. So it's going to be some time before they... Uh, get up there and get all of that out. Uh, all they've been able to do so far that I know is recover some equipment and uh, positively identify it as the the aircraft. And uh, they have positively stated that the life support equipment is there. Therefore, the pilot uh, had to crash with the aircraft. Well, uh, I'm kind of biased. I don't believe anything the media tells me anymore. Uh, well, there's no reason not to believe this. I mean, what what do you see here? Well, what I see there is uh, right away after that plane supposedly disappeared with, within an hour, I believe, it was all over the, the media as missing. And uh, I don't know the military to uh, let stuff out like that right away. Well, it, it wasn't an hour. It was quite some time after that plane disappeared before it was in the media as missing. Well, it just sounds fishy to me. I mean, I was waiting for the, all the facts to come out. You know, my, my dad was an Air Force pilot. I was reared on Air Force bases of all of my uh, childhood life. And i got to tell you right now, there's nothing fishy going on here. You think so? Planes disappear. When they disappear, they notify the press. The press publishes it. Uh, the only weird thing about this is that the pilot deviated so much from his course. Nobody knows what he was doing, and nobody's ever going to know, especially if he's dead. Um, you know, that's... But there are things that can happen in airplanes at altitude. I don't know what happened with that airplane, but I have no reason to doubt that, the, uh, that, that that's the plane. Okay, Bill, I'll let another caller get in there. Okay, and in absence of any contrary indications or proof otherwise, I, I have to uh, say that's probably it. I mean, you can't see a, you can't see something evil in everything that happens. I mean, it's just not that, the world isn't that way. Oh, okay, well, I wasn't seeing anything evil, I just don't believe it until oh. all the facts are out. Well, you, sh you shouldn't believe everything until all the facts are in, but uh, like I said, I don't know anything other than what they've told me, and I have no reason whatsoever to doubt it. Okay, good afternoon, Bill. Thanks for calling. And thanks for asking that question, because there's probably a lot of people out there wondering about it. I know the, the, the silly stuff on the Internet was beyond, uh, beyond comment. I mean, there's some real crazy people out there. <laughs> um, it always has been, I guess. 520-333-4578 is the number. Good afternoon, you're on the air.
Yeah, hi Bill, happy birthday, and uh, good to see you got some rest. Thank you. Oh yeah, I needed that rest. Is this Ron? No, this is Mike. I'm calling from Colorado. Oh hi Mike, you sound like another fellow that I know named Ron. Oh okay. No, I met him one time. That was oh, I think that was about two or three years ago when you went to Denver at the Expo. Okay. Uh, all that preparedness thing. Uh huh. And I uh, got a couple tapes from you, but uh, I. I uh, took Gary Bourgeois' advice to heart, and I scrounged up the satellite system, so now I'm hearing you again. Wonderful. Yeah, I couldn't get you on the short wave, and uh, of course, I emailed and wanted to get information, and they explained how the transmitter worked and everything. Uh -huh. When are you going to start transmitting? Well, I wanted to find out something from you about how much does it cost to get the, uh, FM, the FM part of the transmitter. Uh, well, it's it's one unit. It is the FM transmitter. Okay. And the only one I recommend, if you get it in kit form, is two forty nine ninety five. If you get it in fully wired and tested, it's three ninety nine ninety five. Okay. Well, and all you need I, to I, I found stuff my satellite system, six foot dish, receiver, cables, the whole thing for just over three hundred dollars. Uh huh. So. Uh, That's great. Yeah, not a bad deal. I wanted to encourage anybody else to. Uh, you know, I was getting into it to take that advice from Gary to heart. It's on the internet. Sure. Well, anybody, anybody in this country can have a satellite receiving system and a low power FM broadcast station for anywhere between five hundred and a thousand dollars complete. Uh huh. And I didn't know anything about putting those things together or lining them up or anything. And I, you know, got all the information I needed off the internet and did it myself. And I can get you crystal clear on a fixed foot dish. That's wonderful. And I wanted to also, I wrote you a letter, I wanted to find out if you guys have been looking into trying to get on real audio or some other form. No, everybody keeps asking me that. I don't have time to do something else. If you want me on real audio, you put me there. Uh, you got a, you got a receiving station, all you got to do is do it. Okay. Anybody can do it. I don't care who does it. I'm overloaded. I'm not taking any more responsibilities. I'm not doing anything else for anybody other than what I'm doing, and I'm going to be cutting back on that. Okay. I appreciate your time, Bill. It was nice to talk to you. Well, I'm glad you called. Thank you. <laughs> About time, folks, that you guys start doing some of this stuff. You can't depend on me forever. What if I die tomorrow? I mean, what are you going to do? Come on. you got to get active. you you got to be a part of this. you got to you got to do it. Somebody out there has to uh, be able to jump up and take my place when uh, I mosey on uh, over into uh, Never Never Land. And it's going to happen someday, you know. None of us ever gets out of here alive. So you, you might as well be thinking about that. I had one lady come up to me in California and says, Oh, Bill, what are we going to do when you're gone? She says, I don't really want you to go, and, and I'm not suggesting that you're, anything's going to happen to you, but what are we going to do without you? <laughs> I looked her right in the eye and I said, You, dear lady, are going to figure out a way to carry on. That's what you're going to do without me. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Hello, Bill. Hello. Hi. Happy birthday. This is Kurt from Vermont. Thank you. Kurt, can you talk louder? Yes, I can. How's that? That's much better. There we go. Um, I was just wondering uh, what your take is on the book called Oklahoma Day One out there. How can there even be a trial with that book out there? It should be mandatory reading for everyone. Well, it should be, but uh, it's not, and um, they're having a trial anyway. And, uh, the, the, <laughs> it's a joke is what it is. It's like the Soviet Union. They had show trials, and, um, you know, it's just for public consumption. That's all. And I was also wondering what your take might be with uh, the Flight 800 thing going on now with Louis Fries and the mechanical thing. Well, we already know. We have proven beyond any shadow of a doubt that a missile hit that plane. The only thing we don't know is who fired it. How can they keep this is beyond me? I don't know. I have no idea, my friend, how they do all of this stuff. But when you have almost 300 people who saw a missile go up and hit the plane, and you can prove that 150 of them are credible, and uh, all you need is two or three to convict somebody of murder in a court of law, uh, a missile hit that plane. Yeah. There is no doubt about it. Thank there's God. even there's even photographs of uh, the missile in flight. There's a radar tape which shows the missile 
uh, firing and then hitting the plane. I mean, <laughs> you know, what no. what can I say? People are stuff sheet, but thank God for you because you're waking at least a handful of people up. You know, one is better than none. Yeah, one is better than none. Yeah, and, and, but it's not just me. There are an awful lot of people out there who are who are working to try to educate the American people. Some better than others. Some sometimes good, sometimes bad. Some you know. There's and it's, you just follow my advice. Listen, to everybody, read everything. Believe absolutely nothing unless you can prove it. Exactly. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thanks. And thanks for calling. Five two zero three 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 four five. Seven, eight. There are a few people out there who are saying that the United States Navy fired the missile that hit Flight 800. And there's absolutely no proof for that whatsoever. Whoever uh, is spouting that routine in the absence of any proof at all uh, has some kind of agenda that they're uh, furthering. Nobody knows who fired the missile. All we know is that a missile hit that plane. Why won't the government admit it? Well, there could be several reasons. One, it could have been an accident involving our own people. There is no proof of that whatsoever. Some people are saying that's exactly what happened. And like I said, there's no proof. Um, they're, they're, they're lying so far. And uh, it, it, uh, it could be that uh, they don't want the airline industry to suffer. Can you imagine what would happen if it got out that uh, somebody, if the government admitted and actually stated in the press that Somebody shot that plane down with a missile. How many of you would stop flying? I would. Well, actually, I wouldn't because I don't fly already. And the reason I don't fly is not because somebody could shoot a plane down with a missile or because I'm afraid of flying, but because if they ever come after me, I just don't want to take a whole plane load of innocent people with me. And that's an easy way to get rid of somebody is, uh, is make a plane crash. So, I don't fly, just simply because if they ever decide to, uh, to do something about me, I just don't want anybody else to, uh, to suffer in the process. So, anyway, 520-333-4578. Uh, the antenna to go with your uh, transmitter, if you get a transmitter, and especially if you get it from Ramsey. They make what's called a True Match FM broadcast antenna. It's in kit form. It's only thirty nine ninety five. Took me a little less than an hour to put it together. Uh, it is made for this radio that I just recommended to you. This uh, transmitter. It's not a radio. It's a transmitter. It's a radio station, is what it is. And uh, it's made uh, specifically for that particular uh, unit. And uh, they work so well together that it is absolutely astounding. Um, people who use this transmitter and this antenna sound as good or better than any commercial FM station anywhere. Uh, and it broadcasts in stereo. That's right, folks, in stereo. And it's beautiful. And um, the only other thing that you might want to, uh, to use with this is uh, maybe a, an amplifier of some kind and have whatever power or whatever you use, that's up to you. And where you get it is up to you. Ramsey makes a, an amplifier. But uh, I highly recommend the Super Pro FM Stereo Radio Station uh, and the uh, True Match FM Broadcast Antenna for those of you who may be uh, interested in becoming affiliate stations of the Worldwide Freedom Radio Network. Some of our affiliates are broadcasting out just a couple of blocks from their home to all the homes in those couple of blocks. Some of them are going out a quarter of a mile from their home in every direction. Some of them are getting out five, six, seven, eight miles in densely populated areas, and they're covering an awful lot of listeners. And uh, there are some who are uh, getting uh, much farther than that, and we even have some broadcasting up in the in the 90-watt range, and one of our affiliates even made the Arbitron ratings uh, not too long ago. So we have affiliate stations covering the whole gamut of low power uh, up to uh, almost 100 watts and everything in between. And they're all over the country and, and uh, in foreign countries. And uh, it's just amazing the way that this has taken off and the number of listeners that, that we have garnered through this tremendous effort. And we love it. So uh, if you want to be a part of that, we're putting together a package, by the way, that will be sent out automatically to 
our current affiliate stations and anybody else who's uh, who's interested in uh, becoming an affiliate or who may be already broadcasting and whether you're carrying our programming or not we'll be happy to send you the package I'll let you know when that's ready and uh, and if there's going to be a price to it we'll try to keep it as low as possible but we have to at least make our costs back so uh, also this Sunday the Worldwide Freedom Radio Network will resume its extra uh, broadcasting at noon every Sunday and uh, this Sunday I think it's going to be volume 2 in the uh, Lord of the Rings series and uh, then the following Sunday will be volume 3 and then we'll go to some really really um, super stuff if that's not super enough I don't know what it is um, it really is and the the amount of symbology and the uh, the apparent um uh, Ability of J.R.R. Tolkien to foresee coming events is uh, is amazing. Some people read those stories and don't uh, don't catch on to any of that, or the uh, connections with established powers that be in religious organizations. For instance, how many of you know where the term Gollum originated and what it means? Well, I suggest that you find out. And there's a lot of other things that. Uh, that have a bearing on what's happening today in this series. You see, some people write fiction as a metaphor for current events. For instance, Alice in Wonderland was written that way. Uh, and uh, The Wizard of Oz has a tremendous esoteric tale to tell if you understand the symbology of the movie. Good afternoon, you're on the air. Hi, this is Rita. Hi, Rita, how are you? Real good. I just wanted to tell anybody listening out there that's thinking about going to the conference, you cannot imagine what you're missing if you haven't been there. And if you've been there, you know what I'm saying. And I just wish, uh, if they can't afford it, maybe they could think of something they could sell. It's that good. Oh, there's nobody that can't afford this conference. You can't go anywhere and get bed, meals, conference, and all of this stuff that we've put together for five times the amount that we're charging. It sounds like a dream. It just sounds like an absolute dream. But there are... Um, it is, like your cookies. I love those cookies you sent me. Thank you. <laughs> but you are going to meet people there. That it's a life-changing experience because you're going to be um, meeting people from all over the United States, a lot of them very like-minded. I won't say everyone, maybe not everyone, but you're going to make... Uh, friends like you've never made before. It's just, it's a life-changing experience. That's true. Anyone who is uh, maybe teetering on the edge of how bad you want to look into this, I just think you would really want to do it. I sure would recommend it. Yes. Uh, and, and thank you for that, Rita. Also, for those of you may, may be thinking of coming and you, you've been paying attention to all the media hoopla, this is, our conferences are, are not militia events. Our conferences are not racist. Uh, you will find Jewish people there. Uh, you will find black people at our conferences. You will find people of every different religion and background, Native Americans, Orientals. Uh, the, the, the common uniting bond that the people that you will find at our conferences is that they really care. They are Americans. They understand and appreciate freedom and what it means and, uh, and, uh, and what it's all about. And uh, they're, they're probably the nicest people that you'd ever want to meet in your entire life, including Rita here and, <laughs> and her husband, Dennis. It's like, it's like having, um, being with people with their eyes open, and it's just so uncommon when you're used to walking around in the world out here. It's, it's restful, <laughs> very restful. And it just fills you up with all kinds of good things you've been wanting to know about. And, and the speakers, besides, I mean, Bill, you know, we can never get enough of listening to you anyway. I mean, you could be the only one, and we've got you. Know. <laughs> but all the other speakers are so wonderful as people I may never have sought out because it never even occurred to me to, uh, such as Michael before. Now everybody's hearing Michael, but I didn't know who he was before I went to a conference. Uh -huh. And um, I'm staying real in close touch with Michael. He's changed my life with all the help he's given me uh, health-wise, my whole family. Well, Michael is a, is a veritable wizard with plants and, and medicines and, and natural... Uh, nutrition and uh, right. 
you know, what, what will people do if the system breaks down and they can't find a doctor or a hospital or can't get to one, but there's a big meadow out there yeah. full of plants? Uh, we know what to do. <laughs> we certainly do. <laughs> we know. And another thing I want to mention, Ann and Paul, people out there, um, uh, nutrition help. The main nutrition, uh, Ann can sure help you with that, too. You'll be healthier if you have to go through hard times. You'll feel better, and you'll be maybe more able to go through it in better health, too. Yes. But um, I, it's just really hard to tell people who don't know, but I just I wanted to call and share that because um, you just can't imagine how wonderful it is to be there. And uh, I just think it's something you want to do everything you can to be there. And Arizona is beautiful. My whole family wants to live there forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is beautiful. And there's every kind of climate and uh, geography and temperature uh, that you can imagine in the state of Arizona. Oh, it's wonderful. Uh, but where we're going to be holding this conference is, is not going to be anywhere near any desert. Uh, but if it was, you would enjoy that just as much, I can assure you. Um, because most people don't understand the desert, we would certainly show them uh, what it's really all about. And uh, the desert uh, can be just as beautiful as, as a forest or a, or a Grand Canyon or, or a snow-capped mountain, um, without a doubt. Oh, it's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And I'm serious. My children are growing up. I, I have teenagers at my house. They want to live there. They just That's what's decided for their future. <laughs> just that changes you, too, seeing what other parts of the country are like if you live where we are, it's all farm country. Uh -huh. And they've never seen mountains and things like that before. So it's it's a real high adventure when we travel to the conference. It's, it's something we look forward to all year long. And um, anyway, I'll let somebody else get in if you got time there. I just wanted to share with that with you. Okay, thank you, Rita. Bye-bye. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. That's Rita with an unsolicited uh, uh, commercial for our conference. <laughs> Rita has been to several of our conferences and has enjoyed them immensely, as has everyone who's attended. 520-333-4578 is the number. And uh, you might want to get in here and uh, say your two bits today, since we haven't done this in quite a long time. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Hi, Bill Tom, down in St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. Oh, hi, Tom. You know, we look forward to getting your colorful letters. <laughs> well, I've got an interesting bit here that I pulled out of uh, The Economist. Uh-huh. 15th of April edition. For anybody out there who's seeking employment, uh, they had a full-page ad looking for global community builders uh, from the World Economic Forum who's committed to improving the state of the world. And uh, I've never seen an ad like this. It was a full sheet. And it must have a couple of thousand words. It's the smallest print I've ever seen in a magazine ad. But there's one uh, sentence that makes up their mission statement. I'd like to read this, if I may. Sure, go ahead. As the World Economic Forum is based on the principle that the great economic and social challenges of humankind cannot be met by governments or business alone. A strong business-government alliance is needed, empowered by the integration of the world's best experts, and made transparent to the public by the media. Says it all, doesn't it? Sure does. I'll send you a copy. It uh, gives a, a, an abbreviated roster of the forum members. Uh, like the thousand top foundations uh, and, and top industrial international businesses around the world that have a combined income of 4,000 billion, and the members uh, belonging to this forum are all at the CEO, the chief financial office, yeah. uh, uh, officer level. <laughs> and, uh, I wonder where this 4,000 billion comes from. You know, if you look at the, the gross national product and, and you look at the income of these companies in this country, and then you look at the M1, the amount of money in circulation, uh, they, I don't don't, know the answer to that one. They, they don't jive. <laughs> Where's the money coming from? And even if you consider that the money, you know, changes hands and is spent over and over and over again, mm -hmm. uh, it still doesn't jive. It's, uh, it's incredible. The answer is, it doesn't exist. It's made by bookkeeping entries, electronic transfers. It is, uh, it it's, um, appears in the form of checks and credit card transactions and, and loans and things like that. But anyway. Well, anyway, I just thought 
this might have answered one of the previous callers of how the media does that. Uh, they're mandated to. So I do every chance they get, right? That's right. Thank you. Okay, I'll let you go. Good night. Okay, Tom. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight is the number. And we have about uh, I think three more minutes, maybe, maybe a little more than that. Uh, before we uh go the way of uh every hour of the time eventually, which is off the air. I uh sort of gave you some hints on some of the things that we're planning to do around here uh the other day. And uh uh don't uh, call and, and ask for a lot of detail on these things yet because they're not solidified. And we really don't have all of the answers yet. In fact, we don't even have some of the answers for some of these things yet. Um, as is the case uh, many times when we determine that we're going to do something. We learn the answers as we do them. And uh, sometimes that... Uh, that is tremendously helpful, and in other times, uh, it's uh, it's tremendously hurtful as we stumble over ourselves, uh, making errors several times before we get it right. Good afternoon. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill. Al, who? We just uh, want to. Hi, Al. The latest, uh, happy birthday. We're sorry that uh, we blew it when we were there. Oh no, you you didn't blow anything when you were here. I, I, I thanked you the other day. I think you were traveling, but. I want to thank you again for the contribution to our efforts that you made while you were here. Our pleasure. You've done a lot for us. And we enjoyed your company. Tell everybody about my favorite Mexican restaurant. <laughs> uh, the one that doesn't serve the hot food? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I was still burning from that the next day. Really? Yeah. And you, Well, you, you had one of the dishes that are not hot at all. Right, but I think maybe a little something must have got in there accidentally. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it anyway, oh, we enjoyed and, it and, and had a good time. Yeah, um, and we'd like to make one of your coffers. We got a couple of dogs we got to worry about. So. Oh, pets are welcome at this facility. I forgot to say that oh, pets are, are welcome, uh, just that they have to be uh, on a leash. Yeah. That's all. You're welcome to bring your pets, and uh, no problem at all. Okay. Remember, this is a working horse ranch. There's pets everywhere. <laughs> of every conceivable size, shape, and, and uh, gender and species that you can think of. So okay, well, I'll, I'll talk to my wife and see if, uh, yeah. what we can do about that. Then. Yeah, you can certainly bring your pets. You just have to keep them on a leash. Right. Because uh, i got to tell you, on a working horse ranch or a working ranch or farm of any kind, if a, a, a dog or a pet gets off the leash right. uh, and uh, has problems with the other animals, you have absolute chaos on your hands. Oh, Definitely. And, Definitely. and you certainly don't want one of your dogs kicked by a horse. Right. But they're welcome. Okay. All pets are welcome. Uh, Any kind of pet you've got. Okay. <laughs> you got a pet duck, bring it. Pardon me? If you've got a pet duck, bring it. Okay. They're all welcome. Okay. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, Al. And uh, God bless you. And that just about does it, folks, uh, for this afternoon's broadcast of the Hour of the Time. Um, boy. You know, I just can't tell you how rested and relaxed I feel. Maybe you can hear that in my voice. I hope that you can. If you can't, well, just keep listening. It'll come out sooner or later. I'm not wound up like I was before. I just thought that the, there was so much I had to do that I just couldn't sit back and take a rest, and finally my body forced me to. And uh, I'm not going to get back into that situation again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay rested because this feels good. I feel better than I've felt in years. Good night, and God bless each and every single one of you.